I'm a suspect. Hanging with the killers in the projects. Tater on the barrel, keep quiet. Catch a nigga slipping from behind. OG, Bobby, Josh. OG, Bobby, Josh. OG, Bobby, Josh. OG, Bobby, Josh. What's poppin' T-Squad? It's your girl Keisha, a.k.a. Color Me Pink, and I'm here with this week's All T All Shade, Raising Canaan Season 2, Episode 10 Review. If you're new to this channel, I drop videos Monday through Sunday. Everything that I say is for entertainment purposes only and not to be taken seriously. So if that works for you, then let's get into tonight's review. So tonight's episode was the season finale of Raising Canaan, and I must say they did not disappoint. This episode makes up for some of the slow pacing throughout this season. They did the damn thing. Okay, so we saw Marvin killing Z crackhead that he tried to get rid of last week he tried to be a good Samaritan he's trying to change and be a better person he didn't want to murk the dude gave him some money to get out of Dodge get the fuck out of town you know what I'm saying because Burke been sniffing around trying to get information and shit and the police is on their ass so he needed to get rid of the crackhead you know so Burke won't find out you know whatever it is she's searching for because I don't even think he knows what Kanan did. No, he don't know yet. No, he don't know. But anywho, so uh, the crackhead didn't leave. He got off the bus and it was in a, a crack house uh, smoking all of the crack. <laughs> and Marvin was like, you know, I tried to do right by you. I tried to give you the opportunity. He says, I, I, I'm getting on the bus. You know, I just had to make one last stop. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and Marvin like, nah, fam, it's a wrap for you. Dude was like, well, just let me get one more hit. Like, the crack is that important, sir. One more hit before you die. What? You ain't gonna even be able to enjoy it for real. But nonetheless, Marvin let the dude smoke one little last hit and then he dumped on that nigga and killed his ass. And I was like, you so goddamn stupid. This nigga gonna try to go into a whole spill about, you know, I used to be an accountant. Well, nigga, the proper word is used to be, nigga. Don't nobody give a fuck. You a crackhead now. Get over it. Um... I'm liking the growth, though, from Marvin this season. You know, going to the little anger management class really, you know, helped him a lot. It's not only personally, but with his relationship with Jukebox, which we get to see next because she waited and plotted on the little nigga from the church that set her ass up and popped up on that nigga and whooped his ass real quick right on the middle of these uh, Manhattan streets. Dude was like, um... Uh, it ain't my fault you a dyke ass bitch. You just mad because you ugly. You too ugly to get a, a, a nigga. Some shit he said to her. It didn't matter though because she gave that nigga a two piece and a motherfucking biscuit. Then proceeded to stomp his ass out. I'm like you old puss ass nigga. He tells me your mama was the one that wanted me to do it because she saw you was going down the wrong path. Boy fuck you even if she was straight she wouldn't want your weak ass so as she's whooping his ass the police end up pulling up seeing her and arresting her and she goes to z jail and i was like come on y'all y'all gonna lock her up because she was beating somebody up you could have just broke up the fight and kept it moving but i guess it was the area she was in huh whatever then we were surprised in the season finale episode with none other than who's the boss star, Tony Danza. It was literally announced a few days ago that he would be a part of season three of Raising Canaan, which has already been renewed. I did not know, however, that he would be in the season finale episode. And it was just so dope to see Tony Danza on screen again. Like, I don't really get to see him often acting anymore i know he does his like cabaret thing or whatever and that he's still alive and well looks good looks good and i love that he played the big boss the boss of all the bosses in um tonight's episode i i love that you know 50 keep on digging these you know all these but goodies out the crate and you know we never really got to see tony danza play like a a, a straight up villain boss criminal type roles you know what i'm saying he always was the cute funny guy you know what i'm saying especially for somebody like me that grew up in the 80s and was watching who's the boss and all that stuff but on the flip side if you know anything about tony danza you would know that while tupac was in jail 
him and Tupac wrote letters to each other and, you know, had a relationship with one another as far as a friendship or whatever. So Tony Dan's have been about their life. You know, he a part of the culture. I fucks with Tony. So, um, the Italian mob boss went to go visit him to tell him, you know, some shit going down is in your territory. My bad. We didn't mean to do that. He was like the moolie didn't already came to come talk to me. He was like, the other dude was like, yo, this bitch here get on my fucking nerves. She bold as shit. And so Tony Dennis was like, look, I told her and like, I'm going to tell you, I ain't got shit to do with that. Y'all need to dead this shit ASAP. He was like, you need to get rid of her ass. I'm sick of this shit. You know what I'm saying? Handle it. Period. I don't want nothing to do with it, though. So dude was like, all right, it's go time at this point. So he gave them both the go ahead to go and literally go heads up and go to war. Um, But them Italians is racist as fuck. Uh, called uh, Rock Ella a Tootsie Roll. <laughs> it was like, what the fuck is going on here? So then we saw Marvin and Lou pull a drive-by on the Italians because Rock was like look I already talked to Big Boss he said he ain't stepping in it's between us them niggas ain't ready for us they ain't got no backup we about to kill this shit you know what I'm saying we about to be on and popping so you know she being the cheerleader getting everybody amped up Lulu just looking like bitch can I go to the studio and make beats he just is not here for none of this shit no more but nonetheless it's time to ride for family so him and Marvin and some of their other niggas go and um pull a drive by on the Italians. They drop a couple of bodies and everything. And right now the a war the war is officially begun and they were the first ones to strike. Of course the Italian mob boss ain't gonna go for this shit. Of course he was going to hit back. And Rock ass was just way too confident. She just was way too confident and cocky and wasn't prepared for the fight that was on her hands. Uh, we then got to see, um, Lulu receive a letter in the mail about all this money that's in his bank account. And he looking like, what the fuck is going on? So he goes to the bank to find out where all this money comes from. And he finds out that crown had stroke up a deal with the rock that if anything happened to him, she would get his stake in the record company. And so Lou is pissed. Because once again, Rock has fucked him over. But we already knew that's what she was going to do. She wasn't going to let that shit ride. Um, we knew that she was going to make sure that she had her hands in that damn record label. So, of course, he feels blindsided. He feels played, betrayed, all of this shit. Because no matter what, he always got his family back. And you just won't let me be and have this one thing. You just always got to, you know be the boss of something to have control over something and be able to be the puppet master so of course he feeling some type of way because he just want to live his life and do him like he don't want to do this shit no more and as a sister you would think that she'd be like you know what baby brother go ahead and do your damn thing you know you'd have helped out enough you done did whatever you want to move on go ahead and do that but rock is money hungry power hungry and it's going to be her downfall in the end because she's going to end up fucking over everybody that is close to her. So Kanan and uh, Famous need money to pay the bills over there in their project dump they over there living in. So Kanan was like, I think we need to start selling drugs again. And Famous was like, with what? Like, nigga, we don't have shit. So he was like, shit, I'm just going to go, you know, take from the stash from my mama. He was like, nigga, you want a death sentence he was like shit that shit is mine at the end of the day and i'm like how was it yours <laughs> did you put in on this man like you what just because defcon your fake daddy don't mean nothing nigga like you ain't got no rights to her product but i mean if you want to hold over her head the fact that she tried to make you kill your daddy your real daddy then okay yeah i fucks with it so he goes and steals the drugs um and marvin catches him and calls him out like you was the one that was skimming off the top um beforehand and he was like, you know, I'm going to tell your mama. And he was like, I don't give a fuck. Tell her ass. Fuck her. And so Marvin is shocked because, you know, Kanan don't, you know, go up against Rock. So he figuring out at this point some shit is going down over here because this little nigga is feeling himself. Uh, Rock then meets up with Neek at the diner 
and she offers him a job to come work for her because she said she about to take over she about to go worldwide with this shit like i said she was feeling herself she was feeling her cunt honey you couldn't tell her shit and he was like look i'm not the type of motherfucker that work for other people i got my own shit going down you know what i'm saying thanks for the offer sweetheart but nah i'm good so before he dipped though he was like you know have you ever saw it for me like what's good like you ever you know thought about us and she was like excuse you like yo you you crazy you wild and he was like no nah, for real you ever think me and you could fuck with each other on that level and she was like look <laughs> you know she kind of liked it a little bit you know she put her shoulders back put that chest out did a flip of the the neck and the hair i'm like okay i can see this a rocking neek a little moment here you know what i'm saying get this little young nigga to come crack your back okay so you know they had a little moment there and i was shocked that neek came to her in that type of way you know what i'm saying i thought you know he was over there with the baby mama but it looks like in season three we gonna get a rock and unique hookup here and maybe a angry bitter baby mama you know what i'm saying that's gonna get mad and want revenge hmm let's see where this goes but i'm here for it because neek is that nigga so um Burke then gets jukebox out of jail because of course her ass wants something in return and she asks jukebox to give her the tea on whether or not detective Howard is Kane's daddy and she was like girl really no he's not Def Con is his father back the fuck up girl and she was like look just tell me the truth you know I, i've helped you out you know uh, out of a few binds just just give me the what i need you know what i'm saying like she acting like a crackhead at this point so juke of course does not snitch because she's not a snitching type bitch but she did tell her like yo you need to watch your back because yo people's up here at the precinct that you think got your back they really ain't got your back and they coming after your ass but burke is so fucking hard-headed she don't want to fucking listen you would think after all the warnings she got she has sit her ass down somewhere but this bitch just refuses and i am so exhausted of her and ready for her to fucking die next season because her character irks my fucking soul oh my god she is so fucking annoying so rock then um has a meeting with uh old dude that worked for cartier because she thinking that you know dude about to be working for her because she got the the plug she got you know everything in her pocket but dude tell her mm, no basically you will be the middle uh the middleman once again and i don't want to do that like i want to go straight to the plug and so she looking like wait a minute what like what you mean like i'm the one that you know got this set this whole thing up and then that's when she realizes that this motherfucker went behind her back and went straight to z plug so at this point she feels played but remember this whole scene was set up from the last episode that we saw when rock had met up with juliana and her cousin and remember the dude that worked for cartier had his people in there picking up, you know, some takeout or whatever because they were scoping out the place and seeing what was going on. So dude was always one step ahead of Rock the whole time. And Rock, once again, wasn't paying attention to what was going on and looking at all the chess pieces. She was, you know, all up on her own dick. You know what I'm saying? So at this point, she pissed. She's pissed the fuck off because... A, she has been betrayed by Juliana and the cousin. And this nigga, you know, after she done helped him out, then went behind her back and went straight to the plug. So she's fucked now at this point. Like, fuck to the up. So her and Marvin then go pull up on Juliana and the cousin to confront them about, like, what the fuck is going on? Like, how the fuck you just gone, you know, play me like this? You know this ain't how business go. Like, she says this to the cousin, and the cousin know that this ain't how business go, but he, like, letting Juliana and her new hairstyle <laughs> take the lead on this. And Juliana um, is going off emotions and not thinking about straight business because she's still pissed off about the fact that Unique kidnapped her ass and Neek, I mean, uh, Rock didn't kill him behind it 
And I just blame it on that blowout. Like, I blame it on her Gloria Stefan hairstyle. This bitch done got her hair combed, took her hair out that little raggedy ass mousy ponytail, and then lost her fucking mind. And uh, Rock was like, <laughs> you know you don't want to do this. Like, you know you're going up against the wrong bitch. And she was like, okay, Juliana, I got you, ho. <laughs> and they leave. And Juliana cousin was like, you know she a dangerous woman. And Juliana was like, so am I. I'm like, girl, you was over here getting your ass beat. Like, if it wasn't for rock ass, you would still be over there getting two-pieced in the face. Girl, sit your ass down somewhere. I'm ready for you and that fucked up mullet to get knocked off next season, too. Because you done just got too big for your britches, bitch. So... At this point, Rock is just like stewing mad because all of her plans at this point have gone to shit and she just started this fucking war with the Italians. So um, Marvin goes home to an empty house. Well, he thought it was an empty house because he heard some thumping upstairs. So he pull out his gun, go upstairs and lo and behold, nobody broke in, but it's jukebox with all of her things. She's moved back into the house. And he's so happy and elated that she back home. And, you know, he tells her, you know, we got to protect each other. We got to look out for each other because we all we got at this point. And he tells her, you know, after I get done taking care of some business, you want to go to Lamont's with me? And she was like, yeah. So it was just really dope to see them on such better terms than where we ended off last season. Um and I just pray that next season it continues on that way and that they don't regress back to where they were. So um, Rock is at her new crib, her empty house, pissed the fuck off because she don't know what the fuck she going to do at this point. And Lulu come over and he was like, so you ain't think I was going to find out? She was like, look, nigga, I ain't got time for this right now. Now is not the time. Leave me alone. <laughs> he was like, you know, I went to the bank. And she was like, okay, you want to do this? Like, we have had this conversation 50 million motherfucking times, nigga. How many times I got to tell you what's yours is mine and what's mine is mine. <laughs> and she was like, I don't care how many times you whine and cry about how you don't want to be a part of the business and how you want to go somewhere. Nigga, you ain't going no motherfucking where. You know, want to know why? Because I owned you, nigga. And I was like, oh, bitch, you're rude. <laughs> you're rude as fuck. Like, she straight up sunned the shit out of Lou. Only thing that nigga could do is stand there literally and cry after she walked out the room because he knows that she right at the end of the day. Cause he He's not going to go nowhere. Where he going to go? And that's exactly what she said. Where you going to go, nigga? Where are you going? Anything you got is because of me and everything that he has is tied back to her. So it's like he's caught in her fucking web and it's fucked up and all it's doing is going to make him even more bitter towards her and make him just even more cold hearted where he not going to give a fuck about nobody like nobody and nothing. I felt so bad for Lulu so bad for him because he, all he want to do is be the new Diddy. He was trying to be Diddy before Diddy, God damn it. He was trying to make little fake ass Cassie the first Mary J. Blige child. So Kanan then goes to Detective Howard's house. Um, no, I'm sorry. I missed the whole point. So Kanan is on the block, him and Famous selling dope. Burke is in the neighborhood, casing the joint as always, and sees him out in the corner and pulls up on him and was like, look, is." detective Howard, your daddy and he was like girl get out of my face <laughs> like ain't you supposed to be on the beat ain't you got a quarter to make with the fucking parking tickets this month get on somewhere bitch don't you got a goddamn tuna sandwich an egg salad sandwich to go eat get out of my face so she was like oh you ain't gonna give me the information all right i'm gonna make you get it give it to me so she ended up putting the cuffs on him and um taking him back to the park to where everything happened that night between him and detective howard and she was like so this is where you shot him at he like girl you watch way too much god light <laughs> like what is wrong with you so she basically was like okay if you're not gonna tell me i'm gonna lock your ass up and he was like i ain't even got nothing on me so she was like i'm gonna plant something on you and i was like damn you want to go that far is it that deep for you that you're willing to in 
incriminate this boy on some shit that well he was doing but you ain't got no proof of it was like girl you just deranged at this point like get a grip on life even your bitch at home was telling you to sit down somewhere so um when she was trying to um lock him up Kanan pushed her ass and she ended up falling on the ground and Kanan was like fuck because he knew he had fucked up because he didn't put his hands on a fucking police officer. So at that point, he had no choice but to dip. So that nigga broke off and ran into the projects. And she was like, you know, I know where to find you. And I'm like, girl, what kind of cop is you that you let somebody push you? <laughs> like, Burke, please go get another job. So Kanan then went to go tell Detective Howard what's going on. That this bitch know everything. She know that you my daddy. She know how everything went down. And how was like, she don't know everything because if she did, she wouldn't have came to you. She just would have went straight to, you know, the commander or whatever. He was like, she just was uh, interrogating you because she's still trying to piece together everything and get confirmation. So at this point, um, the Italian boss has set everything in motion for his retaliation. So he just sent his whole goon squad out to handle business so they first pull up on unique and uh unique crew spraying up the place dumping on them niggas and warrell ends up getting shot and killed neek however survives you know he had that draco on him you know what i'm saying and he did what needed to be done then we see the italian crew over there in the projects dumping on all the project niggas marvin here you know the gunshots he grabbed his motherfucking uh machine gun or whatever the fuck it was and tell everybody to get ready and to put all the product down to shoot or whatever so all of the shooters or whatever that he got with him they all get ready and they start dumping on the italians they hit some of them but as they're trying to get their way down the steps marvin ends up getting hit in the stomach and i was like y'all better not kill marvin y'all bet not he just made things right with juke it ain't time it ain't time for him to go but i was like i could see his character end up dying next season and that be one of the other things that harden her you know and make her out to be the cold-blooded person that we saw that she ends up to be because it'll be real fucked up that me and my daddy finally get on the same accord we finally you know have a mother i mean a father daughter relationship and then he get killed so that's the second person that has been taken away from me and then we find out you know later on in the episode what else happens so that could really fuck her character up but hopefully they don't kill him off um i think that is way too soon for some of the main main characters to get killed off but uh yeah our homeboy got shot in the stomach and so he trying to you know knock on people doors like let me in ain't nobody letting him in but 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 lo and behold dude in the wheelchair who uh he helped out early in the season was the one that was like, yo, I got you. Come on up in here. So he was able to, you know, go over into dude apartment and evade the Italians. So we was left off with Marvin in the uh dude with the wheelchair apartment. So we're going to see what happens with him next season. So uh, the Italians are also sent to the record company. And it's just when... Lulu had came in there on some pissed off shit, grabbing up his things because <laughs> he about to run away because of what Rock did and fake ass Cassie like, what the fuck? Uh-uh, no. I just got my Mary J. Blige with the 411 beat. Uh-uh, you can't just run out now. And while he trying to pack up all his shit and put his shit in the box, the Italians come in and start dumping and shooting up the place. He's able to shoot one of them, but I don't think that he had killed the second dude though. So I think we were left off with Lulu still having to kill the other dude. I don't think he was able to kill both, but lo and behold, fake ass Cassie ended up getting killed. And I was like, sayonara bitch, cause you couldn't sing no way. Sorry, ho. You can get the fuck out of here with your fake ass pebbles haircut. So we then um see rock back at her house over in jamaica queens and um uh, kenya comes over to talk to her but she's just able to walk up 
the steps to the house. Like none of the security checked her, stopped her. So Rock grab her gun and go to the door. And she like, girl, what you doing here? And she was like, you know, I came to talk to you about Laverne. Da, 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 da. Like she about to go explain herself. And Rock like, wait a minute. How the fuck you just walk up here? Where is my security? So she looking around. She look at the car where the security was. And she see the motherfuckers is dead. And she like, get out. And as soon as she said that, the Italian store busting on her shit. And shot Kenya the fuck up. Kenya is dead and gone, child. Rest in peace, bitch. You was a horrible mother anyway. <laughs> That's what you get for doing that shit that you did to your motherfucking daughter, ho. So, Rock um is able to duck in the house without getting hit at first. So, she looking like, where the fuck am I gonna go? Like, there was no place for her to hide. So, at this point, she was like, fuck it, shit. I ain't going out like no motherfucking punk-ass, puss-ass, bitch. So, she had her gun out and ready. One of the Italians came in, do, 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 do. She shot that motherfucker, killed him. But the second dude she wasn't able to kill, he ended up shooting her ass in the shoulder. So she down on the ground. Dude walk up on her and was like, you should have just uh left well enough alone or you should have just left. And she was like, nigga, go ahead and do what the fuck you gonna do. Like, ain't nobody got time for your little Arriva Dirty speech. So dude goes to shoot her, but ends up getting shot dead in the chest and none other then unique is there to save rock so rock is stunned like what like she was stunned that he would be the one that would come protect her and save her so he offered her her hand i mean his hand and helps her up off the ground and he was like south side for for life like we in this bitch like <laughs> and we ain't gonna let these motherfuckers come over here and take our shit so they end up walking outside and she spots Kenya's dead body. And right when they walking outside, Detective Howard and Kanan pull up. And Kanan sees all of the carnage. And he is just like, what the fuck just happened? And that's where we left off, honey. With a big ass cliffhanger. cliffhanger. So next season it's going to be the continuation of Kanan versus Rock and dealing with the whole situation with his real father. And then, you know, it's going to come out next season um, to her brothers and stuff that she lied and that, you know, Detective Howard is her real baby daddy. That's going to further put a wedge between her and her brothers. Lulu's resentment towards Rock will continue on next season um jukebox i don't really know where they're gonna go with her next season um we gotta find out what happened to marvin is he gonna live or die um unique and rocks budding romance you know is professor bay gonna come back you know because she still got feelings for him um yeah, Kanan getting deeper into the game, selling drugs. Burke got to die next season. I'm sick of her. We're going to see more of Tony Danza's character because, you know, he's the biggest boss. You know, the war will continue next season with the Italians. I'm super excited about the setup for next season. Hopefully the next season won't be as slow paced, even though I love the storytelling. Um, but I needed more action, but I love the action that they gave us in this season finale episode. However, um, overall, I'm going to give season two of Raising Kanan a B plus, a B plus, because it kind of was a little slow, but the acting, the costuming, the set locations, the music, the storyline, all of that was on point let me know what you guys thought about the season finale episode down below in the comment section make sure to thumbs up this video like and subscribe and hit that notification bell button i love you guys and i will see you on the next video neek for life he's the realest nigga ever peace